In this lesson, we'll talk about using Revit Architecture 2016 as your building information modeling platform. Hello there, and welcome to Introduction to Revit 2016. Now, when we talk about Revit Architecture, we can't help but to talk about BIM, Building Information Modeling. So I'll give you the definition of BIM if you haven't already been exposed to it, but this one is directly from the Autodesk website. So BIM is basically an intelligent model-based process that provides insight to help you plan, design, construct, and manage your building and infrastructure over its life cycle. Well, what kind of insight are they talking about? Well, when I think of insight, I think of having the most relevant, the most powerful information I can have before embarking on something. Well, in this case, uh, we're talking about building design. So if I can have more information about the building I'm designing, the site that I'm working at, how my building will perform in that site and that area and look and all these things, it's going to make the whole process of getting this building constructed a lot easier, a lot more efficient, and a lot cheaper. Collaboration early in the design process equals less problems later. So basically, the architect, the engineer, the uh, mechanical engineer, person in charge of electrical and plumbing and all those things can all communicate as early as pro possible in the design process. This will reduce any kind of uh, clashes or issues you may come across in the field, significantly reducing cost, reducing stress, possibly <laughs> reducing the waste of time and materials. But also when I think of insight, I think of if I can create my model and I can create schedules, reports, and I can analyze my building's performance, man, that is insight. Before I even break ground, I have a really good idea, really good idea of what is going to happen with this building. Another idea of insight or another explanation of insight or the great thing about insight is the ability to manage your building or infrastructure over the life cycle of the building. So once the building is constructed and everything's in place and the ribbon's been cut and the keys have been handed over to the owner, the owner now can manage that building. So if there's any kind of renovation projects or any kind of problems or maintenance issues, the building owner or the facilities manager will know exactly what is where, where we got it, how much it is, how much it's going to cost, all that kind of information to help them do their job much, much better. All this to me comes up into one statement that sticks. And I definitely learned this when I was in architecture school when we used to make models out of balsa wood. Measure twice, cut once. I'm going to reduce the amount of waste. I'm going to reduce the amount of time I'm wasting. I'm going to reduce the material waste. I'm going to reduce the stress. If I can create this really quick, test it out, see how it works before I break ground. Well, who's using BIM? Obviously, we are building designers and engineers. But again, just to kind of reiterate, our focus for or Revit is going to be on the Revit architecture side of things. There's the Revit structural as well as the MEP. So, but just to kind of reiterate that fact, but building designers and engineers definitely using BIM. Construction industry, we've got to get our deliverables in place. We need to make sure our drawings are accurate, easy to follow, easy to read. There's no gray areas. We want construction documents to be perfect. Infrastructure industry definitely uses it. We talked about this a little bit in our previous slides. Those building roads and bridges, the ability to kind of model that and create that and stage that and coordinate how that's going to be built and also estimate the cost of materials and things like that really, really give us great insight into our projects. And the utilities. Think about utilities industry. All those pipings and fittings and supplying water and draining water and cleaning water and wasting water. Well, we can model all this stuff with information and get better insight on how to, one, design, but also manage this, these types of systems. Well, why should we use Revit as a BIM tool? Well, I've got a couple of reasons here that I think are really, really important. And you'll, you'll really get a feel for these as we go through the course, but it was really important to mention it. That way it's ingrained in your mind. And as we're working, hopefully you get those aha moments. Change management throughout the entire project is really, really helpful and really, really time saver. So if I'm working on my three-dimensional model and let's say the client wants to change the size of a room, change the wall or add a window to, or something to that room, that change I make in my 3D model will automatically update in every single one of my views associated with my model. So my floor plan will change if it needs to, my elevation, interior elevations, 
um, schedules will even change as well. So one of the really most powerful things about BIM is that information side and that change management side. Also, I really love the ability to design, to model, to visualize, visualize with quick renders and, and nice little uh, walkthroughs and things like that, but also the ability to document your design all in one package. So I'm not bouncing around from one software package to the next. I'm actually working all in one. Really powerful and makes things really efficient. The ability to collaborate and work share, not only early in the design process, but also throughout your uh, process of working with your building. I mentioned it a little bit earlier, if I make a change here, any teammate who's on here working will be notified. So the ability to collaborate, work share, show, uh, div divide your model up and show graphically who's working on what element of your model, priceless. So with that in mind, that's basically how it's going to work with BIM and also using Revit Architecture 2016. So now that we know how we can use it, why we want to use it, let's start to get familiar with this user interface before we get our hands dirty and we jump into our small uh, architectural project. So with that in mind, I'll meet you in the next lesson where we'll start to get familiar with that user interface.